Welcome back to the channel. So on this episode, I'm going to work on getting this started. So, uh, a couple of things I want to kind of go over though. I'm going to try to kind of show you the best that I can here. So this corner here on the transmission pan, it keeps leaking. And at this point, the only thing I can think of is that the reason why it's leaking is because of the, uh, not the gasket, but I think the pan is warped. I initially thought it was the dipstick tube. So, you know, this tube here, so it's kind of hard to reach under here. However, um, I went ahead and replaced that. Uh, it kind of looks like it has some uh, leakage around there, but that's actually just the grease that I used to slide it in so it wouldn't uh, tear the O-ring. And uh, the radiator here, so this part here that feeds into this, well, the hose, you know, goes into here. This around this area is really uh, bent. I, I don't know if they used uh, screwdrivers to try to pry the hose off uh, or the hoses in the, in the past off, but they created dents all around here. So I had to use a little bit of a silicone to kind of make sure it sealed um, as good as it, it could. And I moved this... Uh, uh, clamp as high up as I could as well as the hose as high up as I could so that uh because when I filled it up to the top it began leaking uh antifreeze however the car is down on the ground now on its own wheels and uh at this point it's time to install the distributor get it aligned and everything and see if the car will turn on and uh Hopefully it does. Hopefully there's no issues. I'll address the transmission pan uh, issue later on. For now, I just wanted to see if it'll turn on for a little bit. If it does, then uh, I need to dump the engine oil and put good oil and a new filter in. All right, so I've primed everything. You can see oil everywhere. And so uh, I'm gonna hurry up and put this valve cover on and uh, drop in the distributor and I'm gonna hurry up and put in the battery and see if it'll turn over. By the time you get done like lining this up how it's supposed to be and hopefully it is how it's supposed to be, I think that's how it was before. Um, all my markings are lined up. It's just a matter of like the one that was here got erased. So I'm not 200% sure I'm like dead dead on, but I think I'm really, really close. But by the time you get done uh, screwing that bolt in right there, uh, who knows like putting it in and then screwing it on like it takes forever so uh, at this point i almost think everything's dry now okay so i've i temporarily uh well, dressed the wires let's say and so i'm going to install the battery and then let's see if it'll turn over well that sucked I tried firing it and uh, I found fuel up all the way up here and then some fell down here and stuff. So that means that uh, I originally assumed that this carburetor had uh, more issues than what I was, you know, than just simply putting a gasket and cleaning it up. So I'm going to have to rebuild it uh, before I can continue with this. All right, I've pulled the carburetor. Um, I got a new gasket kit here and uh, a new, basically it's all a rebuild kit. So I'm going to hurry up and try to rebuild this. Um, never done it before, so it might take me longer than it would take most people. However, um, it shouldn't be too complicated. Once you actually tear it apart, at first it looks like a giant puzzle, but then afterwards everything just kind of, you can tell that only certain things go in a certain place. All right, so I've got all the parts that I'm going to be reusing cleaned. The ones that I'm not gonna be reusing are over there, but, uh, and obviously not gonna be using that gasket. So uh, I'm going to reassemble it. All right, uh, she's all rebuilt. Let's, uh, hopefully I did everything right. Um, I followed all the steps that, uh, you know, and instructions on how to rebuild one. So hopefully we're all good to go. I'm going to get this on the car and then we'll attempt turning it on again and hopefully this doesn't flood and the car starts fine. Something you probably want to do uh, before you, you get fuel running through the rebuild carburetor is change out your fuel filter 
uh, you just never know what's in the gas nowadays. Um, I'm also going to be pumping out uh, all the fuel from the fuel tank just to make sure I have new fuel in there. Uh, one thing that I noticed while I was back here, I don't know if you can see under there. So um, all that oil splashing up there. So I think that seal that uh, the drive line connects into, um, I think I'll have to replace that here. But uh, I guess more content for you guys soon. Oh, sweet. All right, there she is. She seems to be running fine. So it'll be time to start doing some things with uh, timing. But other than that, she sounds pretty healthy. But I gotta change the oil out and everything like that before I get too much deeper into this. Well, there you have it. I have to clean up this mess I have on the floor. She's running, um, at least idling. One thing I'm going to do really fast uh, now that I shut it off is uh, the engine has circulated a little bit. So there's been pressure on a lot of parts, right? And so I wanna make sure the gaskets are doing their job. So I'm going to let it sit here. I'm going to put some pieces of cardboard underneath it. I'm going to let it sit here for a couple of days and see if there's any drips anywhere. Um, that way I can determine if maybe something's not sealing properly or if there's anything I need to, to uh, take care of. Visually, I didn't see any leaks. I'm going to now focus on uh, setting the timing, but before I can do that, I want to change out the oil that's in there because I don't want the old oil to circulate through the engine for too long. I did run it for about a minute, not, not much longer. Smoked everything in my garage, so this is why you see all this. So the I, um, the timing does need to be adjusted. Also, the carburetor, when I turn it off, is still dumping a little bit of fuel, so I probably didn't do the adjustments right on one of the floats. So I, I have to do a little more into that. Uh, the reason that this has taken so long is because the starter went out, as I kind of explained, and so it, it cranked one time, and then the second time I went to crank, it didn't finish the, the cranking, and then the engine finished uh, setting after I had turned the key off, so the solenoid on the starter got uh, was seizing, or something else was going on with it. So had to replace that too. So outside of the issues with the carburetor and then also the float, I mean the car, all the float, uh, <coughs> sorry, dying, um, the starter, I, I've been delayed quite a bit. So the timing will have to take place in another video. Also the breaking of the rear differential, but overall I'm pretty happy. She's idling again and uh, she's kind of doing things on her own now, which uh, it, it's, to me, it's a lot of progress. Uh, let's see what, I, what else I got going on on the next episode. I'm not even going to say what I plan to do next time because this car is full of surprises. We'll finish this off here, actually. So thanks for watching. We will just catch you guys on the next one.